All right, so I just deleted everything from Amazon AWS. So we're starting from zero. And you can see the seven steps involved with this deployment. Some of these steps take a little longer than the others, but we're at step number one, provision infrastructure in AWS. So let's get started with that. Before we dive into the AWS console, let's take a look and see what we're gonna be building. So AWS Cloud has a number of different regions across the world, and within an every region, there's a number of different availability zones. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual private cloud. So a VPC that spans multiple availability zones. Why do we wanna span multiple AZs? Because that allows us to deploy assets in all the AZs, and deploying assets to multiple AZs is one way of improving our availability. If a server goes down in one AZ, it can automatically fail over to a server that's in another AZ. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple of subnets. So we're gonna have one public subnet and one private subnet in every AZ. And for this monolithic application, we're just gonna deploy a single EC2 instance. And we're gonna put it in the public subnet of, of AZ number one. So that's what our architecture looks like at this point. So let's get into the Amazon AWS console and get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our VPC. And again, the VPC is important because it allows us to isolate our applications networking. So when we deploy things to Amazon AWS, each application has its own virtual private cloud. So everything that's architecturally related to that application can talk amongst itself, but it's isolated from other applications that might be in our cloud. All right, so we're gonna click Create VPC, and we're gonna go with this VPC and more because by default, it's already kind of configuring where we wanna end up. So there's gonna be one VPC. It's gonna be deployed to multiple AZ. So in this case, East 1A and East 1B. And within each AZ, there's gonna be one public and one private subnet. And you can see those both there. The only thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna change this project name to Laravel Demo. We're gonna leave the CIDR block alone. So right now we can get 65,536 IP addresses in this virtual private cloud. We're gonna also accept the default for tenancy. And here's where you can configure the multiple AZs. So you can just deploy to one AZ if you want, but we're gonna leave it at two. And we're also gonna keep the defaults for the public subnets and the private subnet. So in production environments, you're probably gonna to wanna to deploy at least one NAT so that your private subnets get access to the internet. Otherwise, any EC2 instances that you deploy inside that private subnet, you won't have access to installing any applications like through the internet. So you won't be able to uh, pseudo apt install or anything like that. So NAT gateways do cost additional money. It's about a dollar a day. So I'm gonna opt for none at this point. We can always add one later on if we need it. So I'm gonna accept the VPC endpoints default, which is this S3 gateway. And then we're gonna keep the defaults here for the DNS option. So enable DNS host names and enable DNS resolution. All right, so we're happy with where we have. So we're gonna go ahead and create this VPC. And then we can go and look at the VPC. You can see that AWS did quite a bit here for us. Not only did it do the subnets, but it set up the route tables and all the network connections to ensure that our public subnets have access to the internet. But next thing we wanna do is we wanna add an EC2 instance. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our instances. Right now there are zero running. If I clear out this filter, you will see at this point the Laravel-demo instance, which was the old one that I deleted just before we got started here. Amazon AWS will clear, will clean that up for us eventually, but for now that's still there. So we're gonna launch a new instance, and now we're gonna start configuring what our EC2 instance looks like. And we're gonna call it Laravel Demo. So Amazon provides a number of machine images so you that, that you can spin up your EC2 instance with. We're gonna select Ubuntu, and we're gonna keep the default so that we're eligible for the free tier. Architecture, we're also gonna do the 64-bit um, Intel architecture. There is the ARM architecture also, but then once you get to the ARM, you're no longer free tier eligible. So we're gonna select Intel so we can stay free tier eligible. All right, the next thing is, is we need to select our instance type. For your production application, you're gonna have to dive into what these instance types are and, and select an instance type that matches the requirements that your, your product will need. 
And so the variations a lot are between CPU, number of CPUs and how much memory. We're just gonna stick with a T2 Micro because it falls in the, the free tier. But again, that's probably not your main concern if you're really pushing to production. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a key pair. This is gonna allow us to SSH into our EC2 instance and do configurations later on. So we're gonna create a new key pair and we're gonna, I'm gonna call it Laravel Demo. And we're just gonna keep the defaults here. So RSA and PEM format. After we click create key pair, it's gonna prompt us to save a file to our disk. So we're gonna save it locally. I am just gonna stick this right on my desktop so that I can have it for later on. And now you can see it's already selected the, the key that we just created. Now for the network settings, we're gonna to wanna to edit this. This is not the VPC that we just created. So we wanna be able to edit it and we wanna select our VPC. And then the subnet that we're gonna put this in is we're gonna stick this in the public subnet for number one, the first AZ. That's where we're gonna put it. We do want AWS to automatically assign IP addresses. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna stick with the create security group option. We don't have an existing security group, so it's gonna create one for us. But I'm gonna rename this to just uh, Laravel demo. SG so that I later on I can identify this if I have to delete stuff and clean things up and similarly I will take this name and we were just going to prefix it with that little description so for the inbound security group rules we are going to keep SSH because we're going to need that to connect but we're also going to add two new rules so we're going to allow HTTP on port 80 and it's going to be from anywhere so anybody in the, on the internet can access this through port 80. That's what we're saying. And we're gonna add another rule for HTTPS, which is right here, which will be port 443. And again, anywhere on the internet. And it is alerting us that we are allowing uh, these three ports from access to from anywhere in the internet. So anybody can access them. Obviously for our web application, we do want that. Probably for our SSH port, we probably want to lock that down a little bit. If you know what your IP address ranges are, you can lock this down to certain IP addresses, but we're going to leave this open for now. Storage configurations for free tier. I want to stay within the free tier so I can go up to 30, but 8 gig is just fine for now. So we're just going to leave it right there. And then if we look at the summary over here, this is exactly what we want to get to. We're in, within the free tier and we're going to go ahead and launch this instance. And if we go back to the instances, you can see now that this instance that we just created is pending. Let's keep refreshing here. And now that you can see that it's actually running. At this point, we've actually launched all the infrastructure in AWS that we need.